This verse is not talking about taking away your problems. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our weekly service. This is a listener-supported ministry, and we ask that you pray and see what God would have you give. Now let's get to our sermon for today. Interesting thing happened this week. I felt like Monday when I got up at my normal time to start studying that I just felt the whole world was caving in on me, all kinds of responsibility and things to get done and all. And I was going to the Lord saying, Lord, I need more and more peace in my life. And all. and I said, you know, the pre- preacher today is preaching to himself. So you get to hear what God's dealing with me. And I asked him, I said, Lord, I need help. And what's interesting is God gave me verses that I know by heart. But yet I needed a refresher course. I needed God to show me this. And then I realized we all have that, don't we? We, got it. we know a lot of the verses, but sometimes we just don't think to go to them and use them at all. So God gave me Philippians 4, 7, very familiar verse. It says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I needed this from God in my own life, and I needed the peace from God that he has. But when I started studying this, something interesting happened. God showed me something right off the bat. This verse is not talking about taking away your problems. It's talking to you how he's going to deal with you through the problem. How he can give you peace through the problem. Not take it away. And that's something for us to understand. That now we can pray that God will help us through a problem and all. But I think we'll, hopefully you'll understand a little bit more as we go through this. But that God can give us the peace while we're going through them. And that's the key here. You know, worry is the greatest thief of joy. In Luke 12, 25, <coughs> now I'm going to read from another version, okay? But it says this, because it brought it out the way I wanted you to hear it. It says, and, and by the way, if you notice on the sheet there, keep your fingers in Philippians, because we're going to be back to that all the time, most of the time. Okay, Luke twelve twenty five says, And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? You know, worrying never accomplishes anything but puts you in deeper depression. It doesn't fix anything. It doesn't help you in any way. It just causes you to go in a bad direction. And the verse tells us that. That's why I picked this translation. Because you, and you, you may have uh, words like anxiety in there. But in the Greek, anxi- anxiety means worry. Warren Wisby said this, Wrong worry is wrong thinking. That's the mind. And wrong feeling, that's the heart. About circumstances, people, and things. That's what we get the worrying from, is it not? The antidote to worry is a secured mind. So let us look into Philippians and see how God taught me to get victory over worry. Now we're going to go to Philippians 4.4. 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Now don't this sound similar to last, last week's sermon with Thanksgiving? You know what? I want to talk to you down to earth about that. This is exactly how I feel what I'm about to tell you. It's easy to say, And it seems hard to do. It's easy to say, I'm going to not worry no more. You know, I'm going to rejoice. How can I rejoice when the whole world is coming down on me? It's not enough for us to tell ourselves to quit worrying. Worrying is a thief. And it's an inside job. It occurs inside of us, not from the outside, but from the inside. And it takes more than good intentions to get victory. Then you go down to verse 6. It says, Be careful for nothing but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. God tells us here that it is not a one-time fix. And I don't know why we seem to always think that, you know, I'm going to sit down and pray and pray, and God's going to answer the prayer tomorrow or the next day. It's a constant state of prayer is how we get victory over worry. And it's just like a job. You know, you have to get up every morning to go to work. You don't want to get up. 
You like being in a comfortable bed, but you got to get up, got to get ready, got to go to work, got to make money, pay the bills. And you got to do it week after week the rest of your life. And prayer is no different. It's a constant state of something you have to do. And not just one time a day, but it can be all during the day. While you're at work, at, while you're at play, wherever. And the moment you start keep praying about the situation, God says that he will work in your life. And praying, again, a constant state of doing something that gives you strength for each day and all during the day. Every day I must go to God for my problems. Every single day. And when I do this every day, something starts happening. When you start really putting this to prayer, guess what happens? You start to stop worrying. Slowly, your worrying starts going away. Now why? Because you're spending so much time taking it before the Lord. You stop thinking about the worrying part. And then you drop down to ver- uh, in verse 6. It says, be careful for nothing. Meaning, a- anxiety, uh, uh, anxious, be anxious for nothing, uh, or not over-anxious. The Greek word for anxious is worry. We worry about our problems to go away, and guess what? They don't. Remember what God told me to start off with. This is not a quick fix. Going to him to get that peace doesn't mean whatever the problem is is going to go away. He's just going to help you go through. When you start thinking logically, when you start stop worrying and put some of your thought to whatever the problem is, guess what? You start thinking better and get rid of that problem. God is not going to take our problems away, but he will help us go through it. And that's the key. Vernon McGee says this, worry, worry about nothing, pray about everything. Worry about nothing, pray about everything. In the Greek, worry about nothing also says rejoice in a new commandment. The commandment is to be in a constant state of prayer. If we are praying about the problems towards God, worrying has a way of going to the side because you're spending all your time taking it before the Lord. Notice there is here, God tells us first to pray, then supplication, and then thanksgiving. Prayer is the general term meaning to talk to God. I tried to teach you that over the years. It simply means, just like I'm talking to you right now, that's what prayer is. Talk to God. That's what another, and you're not making it known to God. God already knows the problems. Prayer is more for us than it is for God. I want you to think about that. You do some serious study in prayer, you'll find that out. And then in verse 6, it literally means the word in the Greek means right prayer. Interesting thought there, right prayer. The type of praying when you run to God knowing he actually hears you and knows what your problem is. He's interested in what you have to say. Enjoy God's presence and honor him by bringing to it. He is honored when you take that before him and do it constantly. Because when you do that, you know, he knows that you really are trying. That you know, you're telling him, I'm praying about this every day because I know you can take care of it. And you bring honor to him. The next thing he tells us is supplication now. Asking God for something or to do something. That's what the word supplication means. Asking God to help you solve a problem. But supplication goes a step further. See, prayer brings the plea to God. Supplication urges the plea. Supplication is persistence, energy in your prayer when you take it before the Lord. I wasn't planning on giving this. I looked up the verse and actually gave it to you. But in the New Testament, a woman has a problem. Takes it before a judge. And the judge says, kick it away from me. I I don't need, I'm not going to worry. And she kept hassling him. She kept going back and back and back. And then it says, the judge says, I'm going to take care of this woman just to get her out of my sight. And that was a lesson. You've got to look it up in the Bible. It's really neat the way he puts it. I paraphrased it big time. But that's what God is saying to us. 
If we are in a constant state of prayer, constantly going to Him, you'd be surprised what may start happening in your life. You'll be surprised at the answer to prayer, that God will be the same way that judge was, and said, I'm going to answer your prayer just to get rid of you. <laughs> Here's what the biblical illustrator tells us. Be careful for nothing. Retire from the world into, its, into yourself. Let the lie between let the matter lie between God and you. Call not the world in as an umpire. Now, that's kind of technical, but that says a lot. The last but not least, it says Thanksgiving. I've talked to you many times about Thanksgiving, but thanks, thanking God for what He has done. I can't tell you how many times I've understood what this means. That if I keep looking back in history at what God has done for me, it encourages me to know that God can take care of this problem because he took care of this one, this one, this one, and this one, all through history for me, the ones I prayed to him. And when I saw how a lot of them were answered in unusual ways, that I knew it was of God, the way Abraham and Sarah did with their children, <coughs> you know, with their firstborn and all. God did it in such a way they knew that it had to be of God. Remember what he had done to encourage yourselves. And take that and, and be an encouragement to yourself. Why do you think he tells us with thanksgiving to do these prayers? Because he knows that it can be an encouragement to us when we realize, that's right, yeah, God did that. God did that. God did that. And then you jump down to verse 7. And he says, Then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. One thing this verse is telling me, it says that which passes all understanding. I like putting the, 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 the word human into that sentence. God is telling me and telling all of us that whatever understanding we have about anything, God's going to go beyond that. And the best way I can explain that is, let's say we have a money problem. And we're praying to God about a money problem. And the first thing we have a tendency to do is, is it going to come this way? Gonna, that guy's going to give me money. No, this person. That's what he means here by human understanding. And God's saying here, it's going to come in a place you have no idea where it's going to come from. And when it comes, you're going to know it's from me. And to me, that's a blessing and an uplift all by itself. And the end result is our hearts and minds. We will stay on God and, and what he can do. When Christ died on the cross, I want to stress this. I've been trying to stress this more and more. When Christ died on the cross, it wasn't all about salvation. It opened the door for us to communicate with God and for God to bless our lives. But he's not going to bless unless we go to him. And if you ignore it, if you don't pay attention about it, and you go home and still do the same thing over and over again, nothing's ever going to change. But if you do do it, God's the first person there to help you. I want to tell you how personal this gets in just a moment. But when he died on the cross, he opened up many things for us. Many victories, many, so many things. It wasn't just salvation. We are now children of God. You all know that. We're adopted into the family. You know that. We come to God and we can say the word Daddy. Now think about that. Not my Heavenly Father, but hey, Daddy. I'm going to prove that to you. Galatians 4, 6. Galatians 4, 6 says this. And because ye are sons, and God has sent forth the Spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. The Greek in the Abba, it means Daddy. We can cry to Daddy, just like a little child. Daddy, please help me. Please, Dad, I got a problem. That's the type of prayer we can go to God with. It's just amazing how God puts all this in Scripture. And it makes everything possible for us in our lives. And the peace that we can get 
from God going to him, Dad. And another thing is, when you pray to God, when you talk, you got to open your heart to him. You got to say, God, I don't understand, maybe. Maybe you don't understand. God, what's happening to me in my life? Question it. That's what he means when he talks to us about prayer and going before him. Like a child does daddy. I don't understand, dad. Explain it to me. Teach me. Help me to understand. Open your heart to the Lord. And until you do that, it just blows me away when you see some of these things. And i tell you what, you know what my prayer has been uh, recently? Remember I talked about Elijah and, and uh, uh, that, you know, the soldiers were all around and his servant went out, come in, oh no. And he says, it's no problem. There's more of us than it is of them. What, what do you mean? He said, to God, please open his eyes. And when he opened his eyes, he saw the angels and, and chariots of fire all around and all. So I've been praying the same thing. God, open my eyes. God, open your eyes. Let you see what's happening when God blesses you. Sometimes God blesses a, a Christian, but they don't realize it. And to me, I've been incorporating that in my prayer since I've done that sermon. That God, open eyes. Let them see the chariots of fire across there. Now, it may not be chariots of fire, but to see that God is the one working. peace of God is a guard against worry. The duty of a warrior is to do what? To guard. To keep us from harm. And God's abiding love is a sure, trusty garrison of warriors. And guarding our hearts at all times, if we go and apply it and do what God would have us to do. Sure, God sure helped me to recall some verses I already knew. You know, we got that little help sheet. But it doesn't do us any good unless we go to the Word and get encouraged again. And re recall the verse. Read it again. Read it two or three times that day. Whatever it takes to get rid of that worrying. But I wasn't putting it into practice. And I hope this will help you as it did me. I'm glad my Heavenly Father is the creator of the universe and happens to be my dad. Now, I'm going to give you something that's entitled, like Pharaoh or Job. I think this is neat. It didn't say who wrote it. But uh, let me read this to you. What can make the difference in how we face our everyday trials? even our little ones, is our attitude. We can have the attitude of Pharaoh of Egypt, who, when confronted by Moses and with the ten planks from God, grumbled. Gri Excuse me. <coughs> he complained. He didn't like what was going on, and he became stubborn and cause more woes to come upon him. Or that of Job, who lost all his possession, even his own health, temptation to the will of God, and remained faithful. That type of commitment to Christ will give you eternal life, happiness, and joy. Remember, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's Philippians 13, 4.13. And it says, and we know that all things work together to good to them that love God. That's Romans 8, 28. And then I end here with Proverbs 3, 5. But before I say that, think about this. You have two choices. You can be a Pharaoh or you can be a Job. Philippians 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lead not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. It can't be any clearer than that. Let's pray.
Father, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the encouragement you gave me this week as I was looking for an encouragement that I need that you can put everything together. And what's been amazing is things came together better than I hoped. And it's been a real blessing to see some of these things, Father. And I pray that I know more and more that you're in control. I know more and more that I just need to keep coming before you and praying and keep bringing these requests before thee, knowing that uh, the more I do this, the less I worry and the more joy that comes into my heart. And it, it tickles me, Father, to, to see how you've worked things out already so far this week. And I pray that I know more and more will be worked out as time goes by as we look. And I just know that uh, no matter what happens, I know you're in control. And I pray that everyone here and those that hear us on the Internet will really grasp this, this uh, way of living as a Christian before thee. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray that we have been a blessing to you. For further assistance, call us at 864-270-1472 anytime. Send email to info at stlmm.org or visit our website at www.stlmm.org. Like any ministry, it costs money to operate. Please consider supporting this ministry as God leads you with your prayers and your financial gifts by going to www.stlmm.org and clicking on Donations.